Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In oneness, we are Jess and Abe. So this video is going to be a continuation of the convoluted time part one video. So if you haven't yet watched that video, go watch that one first. Otherwise, you're probably going to be very, very lost in this video because it does get convoluted and does get very complex. Okay, so a lot has happened since my last video about spiral timeline, the collective spiral timeline, and the whole spiral hourglass timeline as well as the galactic cycles. And I was working or I have been working on how to explain to you information about individual timelines and what's been happening since my first video. Um, I've heard from quite a bit of you who have been able to add information, who have been um, really helping to expand my knowledge of this whole spiral timeline and what's happening through connecting it to other similar things such as sound or energy or other forms of very similar um, sort of these spiral shapes and these wave shapes and how everything is sort of connecting together. So first of all, I want to thank everyone who comments and adds your own uh, individual knowledge and perspective from wherever you are because as Abe has been telling me, you know, we are all knowledge holders and we're bringing forward our own pieces of the puzzle. By sharing, we're all helping each other bring up our lost knowledge and bring up things that resonate with us. So it's really important, again, stressing the importance of sharing with each other the knowledge that you have. And so I really appreciate everyone who shares what they have to share to add to information that I bring forward. Okay, so here is that spiral hourglass timeline as well as the galactic cycles that we went over in the last video of part one of convoluted time we talked about the collective spiral hourglass timeline and how it connects to the linear timeline um, and kind of connects these great galactic shifts together in terms of birthing new galactic shifts and the increase of this open creative energy now known as the unconscious energy as we move further into the spiral timeline and then the constricting or the contraction of energy and the less of an integration of this open creative energy as we move into the linear timelines. And I saw this linear timeline as this portal that we were going through in linear time and we are sort of being birthed or spent or spit out into the spiral timeline as we shift from 3D into 5D. This shift is kind of coming out of this portal of energy, this linear portal of energy, and opening up into the spiral energy. So again, this is about the collective timeline, um, this being in this a linear timeline portal and opening up into the spiral timeline, we're now going to go further into our individual timelines, which are held within the same overall energy of the linear time as well as the spiral time. We're just going to kind of zoom in a little bit um, more in terms of connecting this to our individual timelines. Okay, first, let's talk about linear time versus spiral time. Let's kind of break this down a little bit more so you can understand what I'm talking about as I move further. So linear timelines, what was explained to me and shown to me was that we have sort of this zero point linear timeline. We also have a dominant timeline or a highest timeline that we as a collective are moving on and existing on. That dominant or highest timeline actually shifts between different um, established timelines or creations of new timelines because we're existing in multiple timelines within our linear timeline portal. We have multiple timelines and our energy shifts um, between the timelines based upon our dominant frequency and that as a collective becomes our dominant timeline. So first of all, we have a zero point timeline and we have timelines that are lower and timelines that are higher. And how many timelines, I'm not sure, but we have multiple timelines. 
So as a collective on the collective timeline, as well as an individual on the individual timeline, in a linear timeline, you jump between timelines based upon the frequency of the timeline that you align with at any given moment. There is also the splitting of timelines, which create multiple timelines. So the split of timelines occurs following any sort of strong emotion or energy as a collective. So as a collective, whenever there are strong mass events, for example, 9-11, it creates or splits off into a separate timeline because there is such strong energy that pushes or pulls the collective energy into a separate timeline based upon the energy, that strong energy that was triggered surrounding that event. As an individual, I had asked, um, can an individual timeline split, for example, between yes or no answers or decisions? And what came through was that yes, um, the individual timeline can split if the energy of the questions or the answers or the decisions, for example, the yes or no question, if it was strong enough to create a split. So, for example, strong decisions such as my decision to move to New York or stay home in Hawaii, like that was such a strong emotional pull for me that it created a split in my own personal timeline, created a split where I moved to New York and a, and a split where I didn't move to New York. That is the split of your own individual timeline. Same thing happens as a collective for the collective timelines. Okay, so what's happening with the linear timelines as we shift into 5D, as we come out of that linear timeline portal and birth into the spiral timeline, is that the linear timelines, all of these multiple timelines have to merge. They are collapsing into a single linear timeline in order to shift into 5D. So these are sort of things that came through when I was tapping into Abe to bring forward more information about these, this linear timeline collapse. And what came through is that in shifting to 5D, linear timeline must get to a zero point timeline. That is where the shift occurs. I then asked, is it that the timelines need to get to zero point or the collective. And what came through is that the collective energy needs to get to zero point linear timeline in order to make the shift. This is the shifting point. So this zero point timeline right here and highlighted in pink is that zero point. Like I said, there are timelines that are lower and timelines that are higher. And what came through is that the higher timelines shift energy to integrate into the zero point timeline. And the lower timelines raise their energy to integrate into the zero point timeline. I asked, how is this done? And what came through was that the ascension energy forces the integration of timelines. And what came to me was this, the image of the birth canal and the birthing, how it like pushes the baby out, basically. Then what came through is that energy of the collective in each timeline will naturally sink to the zero point timeline. I asked, will there be timelines that do not merge? And what came through was yes. I said, what happens to those timelines? What came through was that people in those timelines will not make it to 5D. I asked, what happens to those people? And what came through was that the timelines continue to play out lost knowledge of those people in those lost timelines are lost in those timelines. I asked, what happens to the zero point linear timeline? And what came through was that it opens into the spiral timeline. I then said, but I thought that the spiral timeline is separate from the linear timeline. Like I went over in the last video in part one, I, I stated that the linear timeline was like that line and the spiral kind of spiraled out around that line and it just got closer in those linear timeline portals and then opened up as we open up into the new galactic age. And what came through was yes, the spiral timeline is separate from the linear timeline, but it's about the energy. 
linear timeline is separate from the spiral timeline, but linear timeline energy merges with the spiral timeline energy in the separation point. So that point from that separation point from 3D into 5D. They said, it's like the Jolly Santa movie. And I said, what Jolly Santa movie? And Abe said, where people do not believe in Santa, they stay in 3D. But those who do believe in Santa move to 5D. It's like that split of consciousness is the split between linear and spiral, between 3D and 5D. And I asked, so, you know, what, what is the split of consciousness? And what came through was the belief in oneness. So those who do believe in oneness are able to open up into the spiral timeline. Those who do not believe in oneness will continue on in the linear timeline. So not all of these linear timelines in the multiple timelines will be able to reach or collapse into the zero point. They will continue moving on in the energy of their linear timeline. Now, I want to go back really quickly to this information that I presented in the last video, this spiral hourglass timeline. Now, I had made a note at that time I had seen in my mind's eye this linear, this line going through the spiral timeline. I even showed it on my sort of little model that I made where this black line in the middle was that line that I saw. And from my interpretation, I thought that it was linear time, that linear time just continued moving in that energy of linear time. But what has become more clear to me, thanks to a commenter in my last video, that comment really stood out to me. And so I, you know, sort of looked into it and tapped into it about um, this commenter brought forward that this line in the center is not linear time, but in fact, it is actually the now moment, the now moment, the present moment that you exist in at each moment. And what came through when I tapped into Abe is, yes, that is exactly what they meant. I, as Jessica, had interpreted it as linear time because it looks like linear time. Um, but yes, it is the now moment. So what happens is as we open up into the spiral timeline, you're, it's like your relationship between your now moment to where you are in that spiral timeline. We're going to discuss this further as we move forward, but I just wanted to make that connection for you here with the um, sort of image from the last video first before we move on. So going back to linear timeline. So I asked Abe, when does this linear timeline, this zero point linear timeline shift into the now moment? And what came through was that it always was the now moment. In the linear timeline portal, the linear timeline just merged with the now moment. So it offered this quote unquote veil in how we interpreted our now moment. So our now moment was very much um, non-existent. Most of us lived in the past or the future or the now moment was about survival mode, right? They said as the spiral timeline, as you open up into the spiral timeline, the now moment has the veil lifted. And as you exist in your now moment, you exist as everything connected together and your awareness and consciousness is more in tune with oneness and less in tune with separation. So your now moment in the linear timeline portals are very much, like I was saying, survival, separation. As you open up into the spiral timeline, your now moments are more about connectedness and furthers that connectedness as you open up further into the spiral, as the spiral gets greater and greater. So the timelines have to collapse into a zero point for us to bring that linear energy with us into the spiral timeline for that to merge. The energy of linear um, time or us being in linear time, will, will, we're taking that with us in the spiral time. So we're going to remember linear time 
when we open up into the spiral time, I mean, all, already there are some of us in spiral time and we view linear time differently. So when you're in the spiral timeline, you see linear time as part of the spiral, as part of, as part connected to everything, as oneness with everything. And that's what's going to happen as we merge our zero point energy of that linear timeline into, um, the spiral timeline as, as we take that linear energy with us. We just view it with a different perspective. I asked Abe, is there anything else about linear time that they needed to talk about? And they said, linear time is in 3D. Spiral time is in 5D. Lost knowledge retrieval is in 5D. You must have awareness that all is connected, past, present, and future, to retrieve your inner lost knowledge. This is done from the perspective of 5D spiral timeline, or rather, your placement in the now moment within the spiral timeline. So again, with linear timelines, I didn't go over this, but everything's happening in sequence, one after the next, after the next, after the next. So your now moment is in the middle of what has happened in the past, as well as what has happened or what is going to happen in the future. So it's a sequence of events. Um, and you don't see everything as connected. You see everything as a sequence of events, as events that are separate from each other. Um, and that's linear time. You have expansion um, forward and backwards, basically. And even in the multiple timelines, you don't really have expansion with each other because they're not connected to each other, if that makes sense. You just shift from one of the timelines to the next, to the next, to the next, depending upon what energy you align with in terms of what timeline you align with. So if you have higher frequency, you can align with the higher timelines. If you lower your frequency, you align with your lower timelines. Um, but basically, the only expansion you have is forward and backwards. Now let's go into spiral time. In essence, spiral timeline is exactly this. It is the ever-expanding spiral of energy opening um, in this kind of spiral shape. Um, and what came to me is that wherever you are on the spiral, so say you're right here, your expansion is everything from here inward. So you have the expansion of everything that came before you, but from this most expansive point. Now this spiral is not flat. It opens up very much like this. When I saw the spiral timeline, I saw these sorts of lines, as you can see, that I drew outward stemming from the middle. So as I stated in my last video in part one, when we open up into the spiral timeline, what happens is we integrate more of this collective unconscious open creative energy, the universal light energy, which is this highlighted part. So when we're, when we're in this linear timeline portal, we don't integrate any of this universal light energy. So we're integrating more and more of this universal energy as we open up into spiral. And what that translates to is a higher perspective. It is this greater perspective of every moment that we're in. This is ascension, right? We are opening up into viewing things as connected, as one. Everything is connected. We are all part of the whole. In the linear timeline, when we don't integrate any of that universal energy, we see ourselves very much as separate. So in this spiral, as you open up and kind of get into the higher parts of the spiral, you're able to view everything that has happened before as connected. Everything is one. It's not a linear back and forth expansion as a sequence of events, but it's more like how does this point connect to this point, connect to this point, connect to this point, connect to this point? Everything is connected. And you can see how you got to where you are because of all of these points of connection. What came through was that in the spiral timeline, the linear timeline still exists, but from a spiral greater perspective. I had asked them because I saw these lines and I said, what are these lines? What do they mean? 
And what came through was that the lines moving outward is the linear time joined with the spiral, meaning that, you know, in the linear time, what we talked about, we had these significant points, um, significant events that created multiple timelines or shifted your timeline depending on your energy. So in a spiral timeline, we don't have multiple timelines. We have one spiral timeline. But as a collective, we're still going to have these significant events or significant points along our spiral timeline. So for example, if we are moving along on the spiral and something happens here as a collective, this point was created. What came through was that as a collective, when you reach the same point again in the expanded spiral, you join with the same energy of that significant point, but with an ascended, more expanded perspective and energy. So again, this was our um, significant point or event, and now that happened. Again, we go, we continue on the spiral. We continue, we continue, we continue, but as a collective, once we get back here, you see with these lines that are coming out, once we get back here, we are meeting the energy of the same um, significant event or energy that happened. We are meeting with that same energy. So the same energy is going to happen or come back into the energy of the collective because this is along this same linear point. But... As a collective, we are here at the same energetic point, but we have a more ascended, expanded perspective of this same energy point. So from where we are viewing the same energy, we are viewing it from a more expansive place. And here we can see more oneness in our spiral. So we're going to view that energy differently and it'll often, or what has been brought forward is it will shift our energy regarding that significant point of energy or event. And I think um, what happens is, uh, and I'm not 100% sure, but I had asked this, um, if this same energy will happen again. And I don't know if it's something where you, it's something like we have to learn from or, um, or what, but the energy will continue to repeat itself along that same line. I did ask, you know, what happens, you know, we have this expanded perspective. Can't we view this event, the original event from anywhere else on the spiral? Can't we view it from say, what about right here? Just a random place. Can we view it from there? And what came through was, no, it can only be viewed in the linear way outward because the energy matches. This is that same energy. It cannot be viewed from anywhere else in the spiral because the energy does not match. So I understand it. Um, I feel like we could still view it from this point, but it's not until we get to the same energy that we have a greater understanding of it because we're actually put into that same energy once again versus if we're here outside of that energy we're not technically in the energy we're not um, fully in it versus here in this linear um, sort of space of this energy I don't know how to describe it but this is that the same energy coming back around again, but from an ascended, expanded perspective. What came through was that as you open the spiral, the same energy repeats itself as you move through the spiral. So again, it repeats itself as you continue to move in that same space. So the same thing would happen if something significant happens here and it would move along the line of its energy. And they said that as the spiral opens, as it expands, your perspective and awareness opens to that same energy. As the spiral contracts, the perspective and awareness of that 
event or that energy contracts as well and your perspective gets smaller. So as we go through the contraction of energy, um, as we kind of merge back with that linear timeline portal, we are in essence kind of reversing this spiral timeline. Instead of expanding outward, we are contracting inward um, or moving inward. I did ask if, you know, as we're expanding in the spiral, If we have a significant point and we come back around again to that same significant energetic point and we learn from whatever it was that we needed to learn from so that we don't repeat, if it's something that we don't want to repeat, is it possible to to have that energy sort of release? And what came through was yes. So basically what I saw was like we get a clean slate so that when we come back around to that energy, then it's we're no longer repeating that same energy. So it's kind of like a clean slate or it's possible that we would have still have the same energy, but in a clean slate type of way. We wouldn't have um, sort of the energy that was that came before, although we would still have it. We would just have this bigger perspective, um, if that makes sense. These lines represent the same type of energy. That's for sure. That's what I what's made like resonating really strongly for me. So whether we're destined to continue repeating that same energy as the spiral continues outward as well as contracts. Yeah, if that makes sense, you can kind of draw your own conclusions to that. Um, Now, I did have a question in terms of when we contract, when the spiral timeline begins contracting and we don't learn from the same energy and we're repeating it again, but from that sort of lesser perspective because at least as we're expanding our perception continues getting greater and greater as we continue to ascend and then as we contract and descend our energy and timeline our perspective gets smaller and so I asked you know what happens when we come around again and we repeat the same energy once again you know how do we transcend the contracting energy? How do we prevent from that lesser perspective hindering us in a way? And what came through was nowhere that love goes can oneness go also, if that makes sense. Or is it nowhere that love goes can oneness not go? Something like that. (laughs) It was very poetic. Um, But basically, in oneness, there is love And in love, there is oneness. So if we as a collective are able to hold love as we go through the contraction of energy, the contracting timeline, the oneness that we hold within will also have to go with us if we hold that love. Same thing goes with the linear timeline portals. If we're able to hold love, we're able to hold oneness despite being in linear time or rather the linear timeline portal, because it's just that, it's just a portal. Whether you choose, as whether we choose as a collective to succumb to the linear time or not, we can continue with the spiral as we're moving through that portal. That's up to us as a collective. And that has been what Lemurians had done in the past in terms of moving through the galactic cycles over and over again for millions of years They were able to hold the love and the oneness as they moved through the expansions and the contractions of energy and timeline, as well as moving through the linear portals. So another thing that came to me when I asked what are these lines moving outwards was that the spiral lines are lines in the golden ratio of a spiral. Spiral is in the golden ratio. So basically, this spiral timeline should look more like this. I mean, you can Google golden ratio and you'll get a bunch of pictures. The shell is one of the most common pictures that showcases the golden ratio in found in nature. So the spiral, as we expand, is us moving outward in this golden ratio um, way. Um, I can't tell you the whole mathematics behind golden ratio, but um, you can kind of look that up. 
And what I was, what I saw in one of these pictures is like the lines in the shell kind of open up one after the other. And they're very much connected to where, you know, there is an expansion point from here into this um, next open spiral. But then when it comes back around and it opens back around, it connects again and again. So that's very much mimics the same energy as the linear, the lines that are kind of stemming out like spokes of a wheel out from the center of the spiral from this perspective. So these are just two different perspectives in terms of the spiral timeline and the energy. So it's like each of these lines holds a different energy, but they're connected to each other when you open up, when you open up that spiral. All right, now let's look at our individual spiral energy or timeline within the bigger collective. All right, so what I was shown in terms of our individual spiral timelines within the collective spiral is this. This is sort of a bigger picture. I'm kind of going to pan over it. So this is sort of that linear timeline portal. As you can see, the spirals are kind of surrounding or around that timeline portal and the the linear time is in the middle um, actually the linear time is only here in this linear timeline portal in reality this pink line all the way through is that now moment that i was talking about it is the now moment that you are existing in right now at any given moment so that continues on into infinity um, as we kind of open up past uh, or birth out of this linear timeline portal, we open up into the spiral energies. Spiral energies will expand and then begin to contract and then kind of go back into this linear timeline portal. So this is just a bigger picture of this, the linear timeline portals opening up into the expanded spiral, contracting spiral into another linear timeline portal. Now, this is a zoomed in version. And so here we are coming out of the linear timeline portal. We begin to open up our consciousness and our awareness and um, start to integrate more of that spiral timeline into our own individual experiences and existence. Now, this now moment that runs on and continues on is very important. Now, in our individual timelines. Like I was saying, in our collective timeline, this bigger picture, this bigger spiral out here, we as a collective move through the collective spiral together and we're moving in this spiral motion. So like I was saying here, we are moving from one point to the next, opening up our consciousness, opening up into, um, the spiral and that energy of each of these spokes on the wheel are continuing and as a collective when we come back around we are back into the same type of energy we went over all this now as an individual what came to me was that we are actually i know this is hard to understand and it's hard for me to explain but we as an individual are actually moving along this now moment line. So as a collective, we're moving around the spiral, this outer spiral. As an individual, we are identifying more with this now moment. And from this now moment, we are opening up into a spiral of energy in our, in our individual timeline. Um, we're not moving with this spiral energy timeline but what was what it showed to me that the energy is like um i'm gonna um put a link to this video the same video actually that i that i attached or i linked to in my last video of part one um called the helical model our so but this time it's our solar system is a vortex this time it showed how the sun is moving sort of in a line and the planets are 
circulating or、um, spiraling around the sun, but kind of trailing the sun. You have to watch it because that was what was shown to me in terms of our energy. So, if you look at the video, we are the sun, and our energy of our timeline is sort of spiraling behind us. If that makes sense. So let me just read to you what came through. What came through was that the opening spiral is the past moments. The now moment is this line, and they said that you are moving in a line. You are moving in the now moment. The spiral is the past. This is again in relationship to our individual spiral timelines within the greater collective spiral timeline. I asked Abe, "How is the now moment integrated with the spiral? How is that working exactly?" And what came through was that from your now moment, you integrate the spiral past perspective. In the spiral perspective, everything is connected. In the spiral, knowledge in the past is knowledge in the present. Central to the spiral timeline is the now moment. Most now moments are in the past or the future. Linear timeline is more easily able to create that perspective for the person, where their now moment is the past or the future. They're constantly thinking of the past or the future. The spiral timeline makes it harder to view the past and the future as separate from where you are right now in your now moment. In linear time, it ends up feeling like the past and the future are separate from you. In the now moment, in the spiral timeline now moment, the past and the future are integrated with you in oneness. The collective energy and timeline moves in that spiral energy, that spiral motion. Individual energy and timeline moves along the linear now moment. Integrating the energy of the spiral collective timeline into their now moment. So, as an individual in your individual timeline, you're still connecting with the collective energy. So, you're still integrating that energy of the collective in wherever you are in your now moment. And you know how we spoke about in linear time how there were significant events. Same thing in this spiral timeline. How there are significant events, and it keeps going.、Um, that energy of the significant events keep going in this collective spiral timeline. We will continue to have those significant events. However, in the individual spiral timeline, what I saw was that these significant energetic events in a linear timeline it would branch off into multiple timelines, right? In the spiral individual timeline, what happens is that it it opens up new areas of expansion for you. So what came through was that、um, energy or the or the timeline branches off into individual spiral past energy along the linear now moment, defining new moment of energy of expansion for the individual. It integrates a new past spiral of expansion point. There are separate spirals for each new expansion point. Past or older spirals offer past spiral energy that helps to further the expansion of newer spirals. The spirals get bigger and bigger and bigger as you expand with the collective energy. All starts off small, and it gets bigger in the final spiral before there is new expansion. Okay, so. In your individual spiral timeline, like I was saying, you're still integrating the collective spiral energy. So as the collective spiral energy expands, so is your individual spirals, or your individual spiral timelines. So we start off small. As an individual, we are continuing on the now moment, existing in your now moment. The energy that surrounds you, the energy that you're working with in your everyday existence, is the spiral energy. So, say 
something else happens, something in your individual personal life, a birth of a child, a new path or whatever, where it's a significant energetic point. What I was shown is that it sort of opens up, it's, it, it offers a new point of expansion within your spiral timeline. So it was shown to me as another point here. And that starts off again as small spirals, but opens up bigger and bigger and bigger. But the most expansive spiral of this spiral individual timeline is bigger than the one that came before. So it's constantly expanding and opening as you open up your energy along with the collective, as that collective energy expands. Um, so even if you're here and it offers a new expansion point, you can still view everything that you that has come before you, even this this smaller um, spiral timeline that came before you before the new expansion points from this expanded point of view, because your spiral is so much bigger here than it was back here, but you are still connected to everything that came before you. And at the same time, I'm being referenced back to that collective spiral and the spokes of the wheel. So it's almost like this is a different perspective, like two perspectives. So this is kind of just another way of saying what I went over with the other spiral. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's possible now that I'm thinking about it, that it could just be two different perspectives of saying the same thing almost. Again, watch the video to see how the planets are moving, following the sun, spiraling around the sun, trailing the sun, and the sun is leading because um, it'll give a better idea and I'll put some screenshots up. But these are not new timelines. So there, it's not that multiple timelines are happening here like it would happen in linear time. But what's happening is just new points of expansion. This is another kind of perspective that you can look at it. This happens in a more ascended viewpoint. This is an even more ascended viewpoint. You have even a higher perspective, a more expansive perspective, and it continues going on. So it's, it's an ever-expanding perspective, upward and outward. And what came through is that the individual spiral energy or timeline is in 5D, it's not in 3D. It offers expansion in the now moment. In linear energy and timeline, expansion is not in the now moment. Linear timeline offers expansion in the past and future energy. So that goes back to our linear timeline where you have only expansion forward or backward. Linear timeline offers expansion only in the past and in the future. It disconnects you from your now moment. In spiral timeline, you are connected to the now moment. You are living exactly in this now moment, this pink line. And your energy is spiral. It's, it's integrating around you. It is working around you from this like more spiral perspective so that it's offering you expansion from where you are in your now moment. You're integrating more of this universal energy, more of that heightened perspective, the expansion of the universal energy from where you are in the now moment. You integrate all of that in your now moment. And I know that this is confusing. Again, this is from my perspective, from the information that I was able to interpret. Abe did bring forward that others will be able to bring forward your or their information or more information to add to this. This type of sharing is valuable and encouraged as everyone holds a piece of the puzzle. And we're all just kind of gathering our pieces to view the bigger puzzle from this bigger perspective, this bigger picture together as a team. Um, and we'll see how things expand or contract even from here on out. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next one, Abe and Jess leave you in oneness and love.